Uh, Jace, I think this card is, like, kind of unplayable. I don't know. I think it's shit. I hate it. Kemba. So, 2-2 two, two for 2. Whenever it or another cat enters the battlefield under your control, attach up to one target equipped that you control to that creature. So, I think this card is pretty interesting in, like, a Pioneer Hammer deck. Right? You don't really need to play this card in Modern. But the fact that you can just, like, you know, it's it's like a it's like Walmart Pure Steel Paladin. The only thing is you have to like I think I don't know if this can be your only cat because it only attaches it to itself. So if there's a cat that has haste, which is maybe kind of a stretch, that's where I'd like to see you know it in like a like a hammer deck and pioneer kind of thing. Defector mine. We'll get there. Norn's Wellspring. Uh, creature dies. Put an oil counter on it. One tap remove two oil counters. Draw a card. I don't know. Probably too slow. Also, like, white plus creatures dying. Not real. Like, you don't want to play, play white in your sacrifice deck, so I don't know if I like that card. Um, I kind of like this card. I'm still not 100% sure. I think it's good. It's powerful. It's it's certainly pushed. I like this card a lot, too. I'm a, a huge fan of this card. Deflector Might. Black, white is Aristocrats. Yeah, but a lot of the good sacrifice payoffs are red. Specifically Mayhem Devil, right? That's the best sacrifice payoff. And also, you can kind of lump um, Claim the Firstborn into that. Instead of submitting Lotus Breach for Dono deck, I do Grow Breach. I do a Saturday, I'm just not afraid of... Yeah, I mean, whatever you want to do, JS, it's your Dono deck, so... You uh, you let me know, buddy. I'm, 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 I'm down for it. The White Twilight. Gain X, make X 1-1s, one and if X is 5 or more, destroy all other creatures. Isn't this, like, the exact same thing as Martial Coup? Except gain X life, because Martial Coup didn't have the gain X life, right? But it's just make X 1-1s, one if it X is 5 or more, I wrath everything. It's one more white. No, Martial Coup was double white, right? Yeah, this, this card's good. I like it. Like, the thing is, I'm not sure in... It's probably good in Standard. I don't know in Pioneer if it's better than Farewell, because it's an extra mana if you're trying to sweep everything. But the flexibility you get is kind of nice, so... I think it would be too too powerful if it was an instant, but, you know, instant speed, make tokens is pretty cool. But yeah, no, I like it. It's definitely powerful. Gives me uh, some Martial Coup vibes. What What is with this 4 Muradin? Just like a weird name for an ability, you know? Trying to zoom, but I can't zoom. It's hard to read. ETB, make a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever it becomes attached to a creature, for as long as it remains attached to it, you may have that creature become a copy of another target creature you control. DJ, run that shit back. Whenever it becomes attached to a creature, so you comes into play, you make a 2-2, two, two, homie, and then it's attached to it, and then you get the trigger, right? So it's basically ETB clone... Oh, and then when you move it around, you get the clone other things? Equip for two mana? That card seems nice. Creature you control? Yeah, if it could clone anything, probably too good, but... It's just living weapon, but with a different... Yeah. I like that you get a 2-2, which means if your equipment dies, you get to keep the thing, right? That was the worst part about playing living weapon cards, is they would just shatter your thing and you would, you know, you would just feel like you're shit out of luck, but... You at least get to keep a 2-2 around, so I think that's a better just better design. Obviously, you have to, like, scale the cards accordingly, but I like it. People were talking about this with Karn. This doesn't work, right? It says non-lands. Non-land permanents you control are artifacts in addition to their other types. Oh, so, like, they were saying that if, you, if your opponent plays this and then you Karn them, but it says non-land permanents. What, does this card do anything? I mean... It feels like it's a unique effect, but I don't know if it actually does anything, right? Urbrask's Forge. We'll get to it at some point. They, yeah, they can't activate the creatures, but... 2 ones for 2, can't be blocked. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a counter on it. When it hits them, you can remove 2 counters. If you do, when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell, copy that spell... That's a lot of work, right? You have to play it as a 2-mana two 2-1, two have it not die, cast two spells, and then hit them? 
I mean, I guess the hitting them part's easy because it can't be blocked, but I don't know. It seems like a lot of work for not a lot of payoff. Like, would you consider play? You wouldn't consider playing this in Phoenix, right? Because you get to you get to double up on time walk. Huh. So what what's like best case scenario? I guess you play this on two, and then you go like cantrip, cantrip, hit you, remove two counters, and then like double fiery impulse or something. Yeah, it seems worse than just playing Galvanic because Galvanic also triggers your phoenixes. Six six for four ETB with four oil counters. Upkeep remove a counter. Then if you have no if it has no oil counters, you lose the game. That's that's rough. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, they lose two life. I mean, what sucks about this card, and it, we're probably going to say this about a lot of four mana black cards, is like, I think it's powerful, right? I think it's cool, um, especially if you can, like, proliferate the oil counters, but it also just kills them pretty quickly. But, you know, the elephant in the room is just, is it's not better than Shieldred. Like, none of these black four drops are ever going to be better than Shieldred. And it's like, how many black four drops can you really put into your deck? You know? So... It's good. I like it, but. Yeah, four max. But I'd rather just, like, if you're playing standard, I'd rather just play four shieldred. So, cool card, but kind of kind of off it. Black Sun's Twilight. Instant. I like that. So, minus X, minus X, and if it's X is five or more, return a creature with mana value X plus return to battlefield tapped. I like that card. It's like, you're never going to be at, you know, up in the exchange in terms of mana because, you know, it's X and a black, so you're like, two mana to kill on one drop, three mana to kill two drop, X2, whatever, you know what I mean? But it's cool, for sure. Later in the game, you just, like, reanimate something. And the fact that it's up to means that it's always going to be live, even if your opponent's not playing creatures, so I like that. Yeah, I read this card earlier today. I think it's fucked up. So, three mana for a 3-4. All your other creatures get minus one, minus one. So downside. But for three mana, three mana tap, you can return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. And if that creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead, activate only as a sorcery. I think it's good. I think it's really good. I mean, you have to untap with a three, four, but it dodges Bone Crusher, which is nice. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I could see it being really good. I'm trying to think of like, could you possibly try to play self mill slash reanimator with Geth in Pioneer? Like imagine like turn two Grizzly Salvage, Seder Wayfinder, or like Rafine's Informant or something like that. Discard a fatty. Um I don't know what the best fatty is to reanimate, probably like Titan of Industry. So like turn two informant, discard Titan of Industry, turn three Geth, turn four activate. Isn't that just Grease Fang, though? Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> I'm not going to say you're wrong, but it's way cooler. <laughs> oh, man. We, we finally have Pack Rat support. Tivar's so good with this card. Mm, yeah, but then it's a six mana play, right? The Cowboys are a good team. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that the, you know, by looking at that game last night, I wouldn't make the assumption that the Cowboys are good. It's just that the Bucks are atrocious. So, Pack Rat support. You'd love to see it. I mean, cool card, but I don't really know if there's, like, enough playable rats in Pioneer. There probably isn't, unfortunately. Pour one out for the Pack Rats. Yeah, nine mana and Tivar. Well, I mean, you could play the Tivar and then get the turn six, but... I agree. It's too man intensive. Like you're, you're not gonna don't don't consider this a three drop or a six drop. Consider this a you know three drop that you have to untap with, right? Edict is good. This is like one of the best removal spells I've seen in a while for black at least. Uh, and the fact that it says each opponent getting around lane lines is at lane line and veil of summer could be really important for modern too. Um, but yeah, very good card. Did Brady already uh, retire and unretire? I don't know. I, I don't think he's uh, decided yet. Okay, this is the card that JS was talking about. Urbrask's Forge. Okay, three-man artifact. 
At the beginning of combat on your turn, put an oil counter on it. Then make an X1 red creature token with trample and haste, where X is the number of oil counters. Sacrifice next end step. It's kind of slow. So like the turn you play it, you get a 1-1. One, one. And then turn 4, you get a 2-1. Turn 5, you get a 3-1. I don't know. Maybe. It just feels like it might be a little bit too slow, right? <laughs> He'll play until he's 62. <laughs> Maybe the Cowboys should hire Tom Brady as their kicker. <laughs> if we could sack the tokens, I can see it. Yeah, you have to have, like... Well, the problem with that is, too is in order for it to be good, you need a sack outlet that you can use with it the same turn that you play it. So you need, like, think, you know, Witch's Oven, because you want to be able to get the ma the most value out of the 1-1, one -one, the turn that you play this card. So, like, you want to be able to play a sack outlet on turn 1 or turn 2. I guess, like, Anvil works, right? No, Anvil doesn't work. Hmm. <laughs> Karate Z, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Appreciate you. Yeah, I actually added that song to the playlist, so but thank you for the Twitch Prime. Appreciate that. Yeah. But yeah, you want to be able to curve a sack outlet into this so you can get immediate value out of the 1 1 the turn that you play this, because you're going to have to lose the 1 1 end step, you know. So think about that. Uh, I saw this card. I don't even want to talk about it. It's, I, I don't think this card's very good. 4-4, four, four, Trample for 3, Toxic 1. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, proliferate. That's a lot of stats. Wait, this is a lot of stats. Holy shit. 3 mana, 4-4, four, four, Trample. Toxic 1, when it hits them, be proliferate. That's a lot of numbers. That could be good. I don't really think you want to play it in, like, a pure Infect deck, but... Right? That's something about Toxic, is I don't really think that you're going to be building a Toxic deck, per se. Right? Because it's, it's you know, it's just not the same as Infect. Is it better than Lovestruck? I mean, I, I've kind of hated Lovestruck recently, but... <laughs> How is it versus Questing Beast? Uh, maybe it needs a little bit more words on it, but... Uh, Conduit of Worlds, 2GG Artifact, play lands from your graveyard. Tap, choose a non-land permanent card in your graveyard. If you haven't cast a spell this turn, you may cast that card. If you do, you can't cast additional spells this turn. Who's calling me? Oh, it's probably spam. Uh, so you get to play one spell a turn if you cast it from your graveyard. This card's bad, right? <laughs> I think it's bad. Yeah, that's true. The the trample does make toxic better. I think I'm I think I'm off of uh, conduit of worlds. Kind of cool, but green suns twilight XG sorcery. Reveal the top X plus one cards of your library. Choose a creature card and or a land card from among them. Put those cards into your hand and the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. If X is five or more, put them onto the battlefield. Mm. I don't love it. I don't love it. Conduit of Worlds doesn't exile. Yeah, I know. But, like, you only get to play one spell a turn off of it. Also, what's up, Rob? It just seems... Ah, I just I don't like it that much. I guess the thing that I'm that maybe I'm missing is you actually kind of get two cards out of it, because the turn that you untap with it, or maybe even the turn that you play it, you can play a land and a spell from the graveyard in the same turn. So. Uh, okay, we, I wanted to, we, we gotta have a discussion about this card, because I saw some things on Twitter. So this is one mana for a 1-2, notably 1-2, just not that a red and six, toxic one. Whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell, target opponent gets a poison counter so i saw people on twitter talking about this with ground rift and um grape shot i don't know 
Is that actually good? What's up, Kotal? Is that interest? Is that like a thing that you would want to do? Half as much storm. Well, yeah, and also the nice thing about it is it makes it so grape shot is doesn't have to be your only kill condition, right? Yeah, you can clearly tell this card's designed for modern. <laughs> well, it's yeah, it's not good at infect, but No, it just says whenever a creature whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell. So you can target it with ground rift and it works. The toxic points you need to kill opponent. Just like Infect, they need 10. Because the way that Toxic works, it says players dealt combat damage by this card also get a poison counter. So for each, you know, you're giving them a poison counter, essentially. I don't know. I, I don't know, like, if there's going to be decks built around this card. And maybe the green-red storm decks, as currently stand, don't want this type of effect. But it could be interesting. Like, maybe you want to play Ground Rift plus this card. I don't know. Maybe you want to be, like, more of an Infect deck that also has this card. So then you can go, like, I don't know, like, turn one Glistener Elf, turn two this Might of Old Corsa Mutagenic. It still doesn't, the math still doesn't work out, though, right? I don't know, it's weird. So, could be cool, but we'll have to see. This is my favorite card of the set, and you can't, uh, you can't tell me otherwise. I'm going to make it bigger, too. You need to appreciate this card. Just 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 appreciate it for all of it is. No, go back. Stop. Alright. Eight mana seven five has the type text line Juggernauts you control attack each combat if able. Juggernauts you control can't be blocked by walls. Other creatures you control have base power and toughness 5-3 and are juggernauts in addition to their other creature types. This is just like... It's just everything that I want in a magic card. It's just such a beautiful design. It just turns everything you have into juggernauts. It's like the throwbacks. I love it. I just, I'm in love with this card. It's not playable, but I fucking love it. Bravo on this one. Bravo. Uh, Izuri, Stalker of Sears. How are we looking on time? What are we doing? 34 minutes in. Yeah, we're fine. We're good. We're good. We could spend like another 15, 20 minutes on this and we can start playing Magic. Bit of a trick for you. You can use the center mouse wheel click to open a link and new tab. No, I know that, but I, I needed to, to drag the, uh, the, the image, make it bigger. Uh, we'll get to Gliss in a sec. So, Izuri, Stalker of Spheres. 4 mana, 3, 3, ETB, pay 3 if you do proliferate twice whenever you proliferate draw cards. So if you, so this is seven mana for a three, three, proliferate twice, draw two cards. I feel like you're not gonna be playing it that often for the seven mana part, right? Could violet in, yeah. Or you could, mm, I was gonna say you could, evolution for it but yeah i don't know it's kind of cool i think the the whether or not this card is going to be good is how good is this line of text whenever you proliferate draw a card like would you pay four mana for a three three that had this line of text but not the first line of text right because you're not going to be but you're not going to be doing the the three minute activation very often i would assume but cool card Alright, Glissa Sunslayer, BG1, 3-3, three, three, First Strike, Death Touch. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, choose one. Draw a card, lose a life, destroy target enchantment, remove up to three counters from target permanent. Uh, this card is very aggressively statted. It has three fairly important creature types. All three of these types are relevant. Uh, Phyrexian for, like, Pyre stuff. Zombie and Elf for Tribal Synergies. Uh, and then, you know, the stats are great. First Strike, Death Touch, 3 meta, 3-3, three, three, good body. Three very relevant abilities. I think this card's great. I think it's awesome.
the only problem I have with it in like elves specifically is the three drops are already kind of glutted, you know. That's my issue. You already have a lot of threes in elves. Damage trigger, not attack trigger. I feel like it would be way too good as an attack trigger. Right, first strike death touch is just such a good, you know, good uh, combination of keywords, right? Yeah, card's dope. All right, Malyra the Living Cure. Green white for a 3 3. Okay, Watch Wolf. If you would get one or more poison counters, instead you get one poison counter and you can't get additional poison counters this turn. So if my opponent hits me with a 5 5 Bladed Agent, I only get one poison counter. What if they attack me with a 10 10 Bladed Agent? I still only get one, right? Probably a stupid question, but <clears throat> yeah, this is this is the answer to Blight Stealing Cube. And then exile it, choose another target creature or artifact. When it's put into a graveyard this turn, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Wait. Wait, that works with Solitude. Safi has the same text. Hmm. I don't really think that you would want to ever put this into a Solitude deck, though. So it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same text. Okay. The fact that this exiles itself kind of sucks, though. Because you can't loop them, right? I guess it's probably intended, right? <laughs> You know, they don't want you to be able to loop them. It's a human. Yeah, but human typing, if you're trying to combine it with solitude, doesn't matter that much. You probably you're you'll probably never play this with solitude. I don't know, it's just kinda cool that that works. Just, you know, observation kind of thing. The monumental facade. Enters the battlefield with two oil counters on it, tap for colors, or tap, remove an oil counter from it, put an oil counter on target artifact or creature you control, activate only as a sorcery. No idea if that card's going to be good. I, I doubt there's going to be, like, oil counter tribal or anything like that, but I don't know. It's it's similar to, like, uh, like Mirrodin's core kind of thing, but a little bit, you know what I mean, a little different. The seed core. Land, sphere, tap, add colorless, tap, add one mana of any color, spend this mana only to cast Phyrexian creature spells. Pretty cool on our Phyrexian tribal deck. Oiling up your bird. You can't do it in step. Activate only as a sorcery. Bruh. Uh, corrupted. Tap target one when a creature gets plus two, plus one until end of turn. Activate only if an opponent has three or more poison counters. Target one one creature gets plus two, plus one. That's pretty good. That's really powerful if you can turn it on. Right? And it kind of fixes your mana if you're willing to play enough Phyrexian spells. I'm going to assume, for the sake of argument, that all yeah, all the toxic creatures are in our Phyrexians. That could be a thing. That that That's powerful. Does Infect like that over Pendlehaven? Well, the thing about Pendlehaven is... Maybe it's higher upside to play Seed Core, but the thing about Pendlehaven is it casts Noble Hierarch and it casts all of your other pump spells, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's also not active when you really need Pendlehaven to be active, which is on turn two against Ren and Six. That's a good point, too. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I could see it, but maybe you play, like, one of each or something, right? Just to get some a little bit of upside off the seed core, because it's better later in the game. I could see it. Alright, are there any uncommons that we should take a look at? Well, we've already looked at ossification. So, this card's great. 
Uh, three mana, one, four, toxic, one. ETB, exile an artifact or creature and opponent controls with mana value three or less until it leaves the battlefield. That card's good, right? Probably in standard. Playable in angels. Just because it hits artifacts. Like, what is this hit that Skyclave doesn't? It's also very, very important that Skyclave hits Shieldred, and this does not, right? Oh, it's a cleric. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm with you. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> I could see Angels trying this just because it's a cleric. Uh, and then I think the rest of these are all limited cards. Uh, 7 mana, 6, 7, 2 mana, 2, 1. Probably mostly a limited card, but a very powerful limited card. Just 2 mana, 2, 1 mana dork that also has toxic. You have to pay 2 life, but. Snag Spin Creatures, Double Strike. 5 mana to equip, though. Yeah, I'm off it. Oh, this card could be playable and constructed. So it's two mana for a 2-2, two, two, toxic two, and whenever another creature you control with toxic attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. That card could be good, right? It's like kind of aggressively costed. New seven job for Enigmatic. <laughs> yeah, I'm good with that. Miss me with that. Hmm, how good is Slaughter Slinger or Singer? I don't know how to say that. Could be good. If there is a, you know, Toxic Tribal deck, I'm sure that card would be a part of it. Yeah, and then there's two other good cards down here. So I haven't I haven't actually seen Venser before. So this is this is my live reaction. Blue Black, 1-3. Lifelink Toxic 1. Whenever you proliferate, choose one. If you don't control a creature named the Hallow Sentinel, create the hollow sent or the hollow sentinel a legendary 3-3 three, three. so if you don't have a 3-3 three, three, make a 3-3 three, three. and then the other one is target artifact creature you control against flying and lifelink until end of turn so you proliferate you make a 3-3 three, three, and then you proliferate again and you give it flying and lifelink hmm interesting Right, yeah. It, I think it depends on the rest of the set and, like, what is the cheapest proliferate card, you know? It's a cool card for sure. Like, the body's nice, too. Like, 1-3 lifelink toxic 1 for 2 mana. It's a good body. Doesn't that a bone crusher giant? It's, like, the, it's the most important part about evaluating cards for Pioneer is does it die to bone crusher giant? <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, and I guess following that up, Experimental Augury is a cheap way to proliferate. It's it's the best Anticipate that, that we've ever seen. It's just Anticipate plus Proliferate. That card could be really good. So, I could definitely see that card being good. Yeah, but there's this one right here, which is probably the best... This might just be the best one in the set, you know? Like, I doubt we're going to get a one-mana card that proliferates. So. And then this is a limited card. Cool. So that's Phyrexia spoilers. Spent like a half hour on it. I'm cool with that.